we're back in the garage. So we got this unit here. It's uh, what do you call it? A communicating inverted heat pump from Bryant. And <clears throat> another company came out here. Uh, the guys who installed it are saying that it needs a new compressor, a line flush, and a new inverter board. It's going to cost $20,000 to do it. So I'm here on a second opinion. So let's go find the master thermostat and see what it says. <laughs> So we're at the thermostat here, and it looks like we got an outdoor comm fault. That's the company that tried to charge them 20K. Might as well just replace the unit. You're going to charge that much. Um, so let's go take a look at the outdoor unit. I don't think it's an inverter board problem, but I don't know how many boards are in there. So let's take a look at the outdoor unit and see what's going on. But the outdoor unit's not communicating, and we have six zones. So this, so one thing is if you need to go into setup, like... If you hit service, it doesn't really do you any good. But if we go back to service, hold it down for a little while, then we release it. Now we have some information here. So we have the checkout. Uh, so we can actually cycle stuff, which is pretty cool. We could cycle zoning as well. Um, but what's really neat is you can do refrigerant charging. So you can force it into different things you can move the eev put in a pump down all that good stuff so that's pretty nice but anyway let's go look at that outdoor unit see what's going on all righty then so we're at the outdoor unit this monstrosity here um it does have a surge protector and it is in green so that is good so somebody's disconnected some stuff That's been disconnected. Okay, it's looking sus. Uh, these have been disconnected and the comm wires have been disconnected. Alrighty, there's a fuse in here, which is burnt. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and reconnect everything and see what's going on here. Man, they just unplugged everything, didn't they? Where's, let's see, where's the short? Uh, so we have a fuse here. I don't know where this fuse goes. Let's see what's going on here. Hopefully it's not a case where I just plug it back in and it all works. All right, cool. So um, check that out. So the burnt fuse goes right there. So I'm wondering if maybe this fuse popped and then that's the service call and then they unhooked everything and said it was dead, but yeah. Okay, so we, we're gonna look at the schematic and find out where all these wires go. Yeah, that is the compressor wire. So we're going to ohm out that compressor, and then I'm going to check the refrigerant, make sure it doesn't have acid in it. All right, so because it's an inverted, it's going to be a three-phase compressor. So we're getting 0.57 between yellow and black. Let's try black and red. Should be getting about the same on all of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we'll try yellow to red. This is not looking too good for you, dude. Okay. So let's try it to ground. Oh, yeah, we are grounded. Okay, so he was right on the compressor. So inverter board does need to be replaced. Uh, usually you do that anytime you change the compressor. Um, but all the parts are under warranty, so I still don't understand why it's 20K. Compressor is failed, which means inverter board does need to be replaced. As far as the flush, I don't know. I don't know why he unhooked all this stuff. Oh, he damaged it. Oh, that's awesome. All right, but that's why we got a calm problem. He unhooked absolutely everything he possibly could have. Just wanted to make sure that he could get that sale. I'm gonna go find a fuse. I wanna make sure the control board still works. Got a new fuse in there. Got everything plugged back in except for the compressor. I'm just gonna plug it in because I want to see if it still has communication. And I want to see if that fuse is gonna pop again. Uh, so let's see, where's that fuse? It's right there. Make sure it doesn't pop. All right. So you hear that noise? That's the uh, EEV. So it drives it all the way open and all the way closed. That way it knows what position it's in. So that's a good sign. 
So now it should be giving us a compressor error or something like that. Uh, so let's go look at the uh, thermostat. So you can see now we don't have that communication error anymore. Um, that's because it's talking to the outdoor unit now. So we're back on this one. I'm getting ready to pull a recovery on this, get the refrigerant out of there. Um, they gave me the control board instead of the inverter board. Uh, but the, uh, the inverter board pretty much costs uh, as much as an entire condenser. It's crazy. I cannot believe how much they charge for that. But yeah, um, when I called them and they gave me the price, I was like, uh, could I get, does that come with the condenser? <laughs> So yeah, these things are super expensive. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get our recovery started. Uh, I got the four second tester. I'm just gonna do a quick little test here. Or I think it's two seconds. All right, well, good, no acid. I'm still gonna put a fresh charger refrigerant in it just to be safe. And then I will put acid scavenger in the compressor. Got the recover going. I'm weighing the charge uh, because somebody put dye in there. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, yeah, I want to make sure that we don't have a leak. So we're going to check what the factory charge is and then compare it how much we get out of it. And hopefully if it's close enough, it's probably fine. All right, we're still pulling a recovery. About six pounds in. Uh, still got pressure. So uh, trying to take the lid off, but it's got a bunch of cable ties to the wires. Um, so we had to disconnect the wires. We have a black one here, a brown one here, and then we have a blue one here and a yellow one. So, and a ground, which is screwed in back there. So in order to get access, I'm gonna take the inverter out and I'm thinking there's gonna be a big hole because there is a, a heat sink behind here. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect everything and then take these screws out and then the whole thing should just come right out and I'll have a big old hole right here so I can go ahead and, uh, you know, deal with my wires. So we have a predicament. So here's our new compressor. High voltage plug, right? The old one. High voltage plug, low voltage plug. I called Carrier and I was like, hey, you gave me the wrong compressor. They're like, nope, that's the right one. It's not superseded. I'm like, is there an upgrade kit? Nope. Mm -mm. Can I run it without that plug? I don't know because I've read the instruction manuals and it says nothing about it. And if we look here, we can see it's in the schematic. There's the second plug, right? If we look at our schematic here, there's only one. So clearly that's the wrong compressor. Tell me to call tech support, which I did. And they don't answer, so I leave a voicemail. Who knows when they're gonna call me back. So the moment I pop those plugs, I can't return this. So if I put the compressor in and it doesn't work, I have to pay for this compressor. So I'm not gonna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish my recovery. I'm going to try to cover this up because it kind of looks like it's going to rain. Um, and then I'm going to go to lunch early. I'm going to put, shoot a little nitrogen in there just to keep any air from coming into the unit. And then uh, hopefully they call me back by then, but they probably won't. So, yeah. Well, I got 11 pounds, 6 ounces out of it, out of 13. So, I would say it's probably fine. I mean, obviously we're going to pressure test it and all that, but... Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, tech support still hasn't called me back, so I'm going to just put stuff back together just because it looks like it's going to rain. I don't want to get stuff wet, uh, and then I'm just going to kind of clean it up. I'm going to go to lunch. Hopefully he calls me back, but it's looking like I'm going to have to go do some other calls um, until he calls me back because I am not going to put that compressor in until I'm absolutely sure that it works because if I do that, I'm stuck with this stupid compressor and that ridiculously expensive inverter. Um, yeah, can you, I don't know if you saw the post, but an inverter costs just as much as a condenser unit. It's ridiculous. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm really frustrated. So that's why I was cussing. You guys never heard me cuss, but you're not going to, cause I totally bleeped that out. Ha ha. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to put this thing back together and create more work for me. Yay. All right. So we're back on this one. Uh, I finally got the right compressor. And uh, we're just gonna get these bolts. So I'm using my Klein pass-through kit. And that's because, I don't know if you can see it, but the screw sticks out. I think it's a half inch. Yep. The only bad thing about this is it's not magnetic. 
looks like those screws are brass anyway. So anyway, we're going to sweat this compressor out and uh, get this thing swapped out finally. All right, so we got our nitrogen flowing through this. We're going to go ahead and sweat this off. I'm going to have to actually climb into the unit to really get good access. I'd actually, I might be able to do it from here. We'll see. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get that sweat off. And again, I'm running nitrogen through it as I'm doing this. Always run nitrogen. A2L is coming. It's required. It's not best practice. It's required. And it should be already required. So just do it. So, um, yeah, anyway, like, uh, here's a perfect example of it. So I'm going to link one of my shorts right there. And uh, if you see that, all that black stuff that's stuck in that screen, that's from the previous guy that installed it, not running nitrogen through his lines while he was brazing, it caused all that black flaky stuff to get stuck and plug up that... Uh, uh, that screen, uh, which ended up causing two compressors, reversing valve, all kinds of stuff. I ended up changing up the entire unit. Alright, so I'm going to actually wipe down the edges of the pipe, try to get some of that black stuff off with just a damp rag. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and stand up the joint just a little bit. I just want to try to get these joints as clean as possible. So I like to try to hit the heat from the bottom and then I just kind of let I just kind of let the solder follow the heat to the bottom since I can usually never get to the bottom. This thing. Just like that. See so how it's just following going towards the bottom where my torch is. And then that way it'll fill in the bottom. And I'll just do the other side just for good measure. I'm letting the pipe melt my solder. I'm not melting my solder. There we go. Now this one is a little bit harder because you have to do it in quadrants because it's a bigger pipe. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if I can get my torch under it, so we'll see how that goes. Now we just gotta do the line dryer inside. All right, so I'm gonna change the line dryer here at the indoor unit. I'm just gonna cut it off and all that extension piece. Um, I prefer to just have it as clean as possible. I would do it with the compressor if I could have, um, but you know, it doesn't always work out that way, but I just find it easier with the line dryers. I have this here, this is my fire blocks to protect the insulation of the suction line so I don't melt it. And then I have a wet rag here to prevent any transfer of heat to the TXV. So we're gonna get this cut off and then we'll get everything fitted and brazer in. Right, this is the hard one because I have to fight gravity. All right, all done. And then we'll wipe it off and we'll pressure test, make sure we got no leaks. All right, so we're just doing our final pressurization. And then uh, we gotta put everything back together and then we'll install that inverter. Um, so this one actually has two, uh, blankets. So this one goes over the compressor and then that one goes over that and the compressor. So they would just want to make sure it's super quiet. So that's going to be fun doing that. I might actually have to get in there. Uh, but anyway, while I'm waiting for this to pressurize, I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in there and plug everything in and go from there. It started to rain a little bit. So I set this up just to keep it off the control board. So we got her all back together. I got both of those covers on. Um, I'm gonna put the lid on first and then I'll put the inverter. That way I can actually like snake the wires through. Um, and yeah, and then we'll uh, start a vacuum. So far she's been holding pressure, so, so far so good. I had to get in there to put that on, so that's my footprint. Alrighty, so we got everything all hooked up. New inverters installed, wired up. Um, I'm gonna zip tie that stuff, but uh, I'm gonna get the vacuum going. I just let out all the nitrogen it held pressure, so that's good. Because when I recovered it, I found out there was dye in it. So I was like, oh man, don't tell me there's a leak. But uh, yeah, so far so good. We're going to go ahead and start our vacuum. And then while that's happening, we'll clean up this mess, get stuff put away. And then I'll zip tie that stuff and clean this electrical panel up. But we got everything back together. It's all screwed together. So hopefully we don't have any more problems with the vacuum. All right, so we're at 426 in 22 minutes. God, I love this pump. Um, it's also the hoses in there. I'm just gonna do a quick ISO test, just to make sure. Yeah, so it's definitely gonna go above 500. We'll keep it going. I'll probably take lunch and then come back. 
Yeah, I would say we're probably good, but we'll let it go a little bit longer just to make sure, because it's got all these like tank things. There's like two of them in there, and then there's this one. So I just want to get a good deep vacuum on it. We'll just let it run. So honestly, I like to leave my vacuum, even if it pulls to 500. Um, I like, you know, in like 10 minutes. I still like to let it run for a good hour just to make sure there's no moisture in there. So we'll probably, um, I'm still cleaning up, but I'll get the last of this stuff and then uh, I'll take lunch, let it run over lunch, come back and then charge it up. All right, so we're about 400. It was, it was at 360, but it seems to be holding about 400-ish. Uh, I have it isolated right now. So anyway, we're gonna take the vacuum off and charge up some refrigerant. Well, I only got nine pounds in there. Uh, I need to get 13, so. so I need, what, four more pounds? So we're gonna have to turn on the air conditioner and then suck it in, so we'll see how that works. All right, so I powered it up. That noise is the uh, EEV. Um, basically, it's, it, it opens and closes so it knows its position. Uh, and the funny thing is, is the air conditioner actually has our standard TXV. You think you would have an EEV in there too, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and kick on the air and see about uh, getting this going. All right, so I want to force run this thing at 100%. So we go to service, push and hold. All right, now it should work. Here we go. Check out. I want cooling. I want 100%. And we'll say 20 minutes. Start. All right, well, compressor's running, that's a good sign. All right, so now we got that going, we need to go ahead and charge the rest of our refrigerant. So we're gonna go in through the suction line and we're gonna meter it in. All righty then. So we got our 13 pounds and if you notice this fan's off and that's just because it's like, I don't know, it's like uh, 47 degrees outside. <laughs> So it's trying to keep its pressure up. Uh, plus I was charging refrigerant so it's cold, so it's probably throwing off the sensors. But anyway, let's go check the look inside. We'll put it in heat mode. Okay, so we got it in heat mode. And you can see that we can see our EEVs at 20%. Our outside temperatures, it's detecting 50. It shows static pressure, how much airflow we have. We're at 60% demand, compressor RPMs. All right, she's running, nice and cold. We got 13 pounds in there, so yeah, so we'll call her good. But yeah, that's pretty much how you uh, diagnose a company that's trying to charge 20K to replace this. As you can see, it's not definitely not a 20K job, but I mean, it is expensive, but not that expensive. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, visit my Amazon store to pick up some tools. And uh, if you don't want some tools, get some socks at uh, Camel City Mill. Helps the channel. Thanks for watching.